September 1969. In two weeks' time, a contract given out to N9SA by the Federation Aeronautique Internationale will reach its deadline for completion. Should the program fail to meet its goal, government funding will be drastically cut, no doubt forcing the program into bankruptcy and finalizing its untimely demise. This goal will be to fly a Kerbal past the moon and return them safely to the Earth, something which has not even been tested with uncrewed space probes as of yet, but there is no longer any time to waste with such endeavors. It is now or never, do or die, moon or bust. Obama Kerman looks towards the massive spacecraft towering above him with hope, an invaluable asset for the mental well-being of all N9SA staff and faculty at this delicate point in time. The Spud launch vehicle is marginally untested, and as of its mere two prior flights, has encountered problems in both. Hope is what keeps us sane. Without it, well... to Realism Overhaul. It's been a little while, but we are back today and attempting to land on the moon with a lunar probe. This first launch doesn't quite go as planned. I think we have some sort of thrust loss in the left side booster, which causes us to nosedive into the ground a few hundred meters from the launch pad, unfortunately. Now, the reason we are attempting to put lunar landers on the surface is we desperately need science to complete the contract of a lunar flyby, which the deadline is slowly, slowly creeping up on us at this point. We need lunar rated heat shields in order to come back alive. So yeah, we're, we need the science. And we have pretty much exhausted all science experiments, save for the orbital perturbation. However, that experiment takes about nine years and we just don't have that amount of time right now. We could be launching things interplanetary to grab some more science. However, transfer windows for Venus or Mars are not for a quite a long time. So the moon is just our best bet. So far, the second Moonstone launch is going well until one of the RL-10s on the upper stage decides not to fire. So this puts us into a spin, but luckily we are able to simply ignite the engine that did not initially ignite and kick us back towards prograde. And we are once again on our way into Earth orbit and eventually to the moon. Now our technology isn't very advanced. I'd say we don't really have the best technology for lunar landers. However, I desperately need to try it out anyway. Margins for error are pretty low, and I'm actually not very experienced with this sort of landing. I didn't really take into account any sort of gravity losses as well. So we're attempting to just go straight for the moon, and it's probably not the best bet. However, it did work in simulations a few times, so I'm feeling pretty confident that this should work. So here we are approaching the moon, and we are about to spin up and light our braking stage to then let go of the lander. Now for some reason, I believe that's the Altair booster, whenever it finishes its burn, it blows up every single time, and I'm not exactly sure why. It is kind of amusing though, to be honest. Now for this Moonstone 2 launch, I believe I lit that booster a little bit too soon, and I'm lighting these to slow down also a little bit too soon. However, I think the moment I lit that first booster, it was all over for this mission because the gravity losses involved in slowing down at that high of an altitude just mean we didn't pack enough fuel, enough Delta V to slow down, and it ended up being an impactor. Now, Moonstone 3 and 4, I forgot to hit the record button. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about 3 and 4, though. 3, I think, blew up. Uh, getting out of the atmosphere. Four made it all the way to the darn moon. We landed on the surface 
the only thing was it was sliding. It was sliding down a giant crater. I had landed like in the dark and couldn't really see that well, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I landed in the daylight and it just so happens to land on a slope. And it was sliding down this crater and I lit the engines again to try to reorient and land somewhere else because we had a lot of fuel left. There was a, it was a pretty good landing. It was textbook. And the thing is, the way the vehicle was oriented, there was absolutely zero yaw control. So when I lifted up, we started into a dive very quickly and I smashed it into the surface moments later. And it was so, so infuriatingly close, but it is what it is. Now, Moonstone 5, you saw there, didn't even make it out of the atmosphere. Some of the side boosters tend to blow up, but that's not really an issue. Uh, the spin was definitely an issue, and we could not pull out of it. Now, all freaking five of the failures so far have led way to the meme that's on this rocket right now. Uh, this is made by Mark on the Discord. <laughs> and uh, here, I'll show it on screen right now. It, it's sort of, uh, you know, a, a good luck charm for this mission. Moonstone 6 is on its way into low Earth orbit. At this point in time, we've gone through a lot of 1968 and time is actually running out pretty bad. So we desperately need to get this on the surface and get the science back home. Something else we don't even have for this lunar flyby mission is a crewed vehicle. We haven't been sending crew into space since Icarus, I believe. And because we've updated from 173 to 181, uh, tank things changed where you can't send a tank through uh, Earth's atmosphere in re-entry at orbital speeds without it blowing up the entire vessel anymore. So the Icarus space planes are going to have to wait for shielded tanks to do something like that again. Furthermore, our crew has had zero training at all for capsules, and that is going to take like a year. So at this point in time, I believe, is when we decided to start training. We have two Kerbals. I hired a new Kerbal. We have Obama from before, but we also have Kermit Kerman from So Now Run, and both of them needed to start their training for a capsule. And I had a few choices. We had Gemini, we had Mercury, we had Vostok, and we have Voskhod. And what we ended up going with is Vostok, a one Kerbal capsule that is going to fly around the moon. The reason for this is the training for proficiency with this capsule was the lowest of them all, and we are actually able to get life support and stuff working for that capsule rather well for some reason. So that is what they are working on for the duration of, of probably the entire year and most of the year in 1969 as well. They need the mission training as well. And we're also desperately and frantically building in the editor for a while, trying to get a vehicle capable of lunar flyby. Approaching the moon, we are about to light our booster to slow down, this time at a much lower altitude than Moonstone 2 attempted, because I've learned this with Moonstone uh, 4, the one that almost worked. Having it at a lower altitude is our key to success. Unfortunately, as we approach the moon from this trajectory, it is pitch black. We didn't really have time to wait for a nice bright side of the moon to land on because of how desperate we are for time. So unfortunately, we are landing this thing without being able to see a darn thing on the surface. Luckily, I can add the brightness in post so we can see what I couldn't see while I was attempting this landing.
approaching the surface, we finally touch down and flip upside down. Luckily for us, those solar panels are not going to be needed because we are in the night side of the moon anyways. Meteorite detection and cosmic ray science, two of the experiments I brought on board that I was hoping to do a long duration science on the lunar surface with, I was unable to run. And because of this, we did not get enough science to unlock the tech node of lunar heat shields. So time is definitely ticking down to the potential end of N9SA. We are gonna see what we can do with the science that we got from this launch, but that is gonna wait till next episode. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out. Wouldn't it be cool if we were astronauts? Zero gravity.